my name is Gene Kearns. I'm the Chief Academic Officer at Renaissance. Glad to see you all today. And I'm joined by my colleague, Lindsay Reno, who is our Product Manager for Freckle. And we are super excited to help you today, uh, knowing how to optimize student growth by, uh, by using Freckle, particularly in the time that we're in. Oh, Judy Caulfield from Wilmington, Delaware. Hi, Judy. <laughs> I know Judy. We go way, way, way back. Uh, but anyway, yeah, glad to see everybody here today. Uh, and again, we're excited to share with you because one, I think uh, Freckle is the right solution. And we just added a brand new feature uh, in terms of its functionality that I think you will just love, 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 love. Uh, so again, my name is Gene. I'm joined by Lindsay. We are here to be with you today. We have some folks in the background, Harold and Andy, who are going to be monitoring chat and taking care of any immediate issues that you have. Uh, but if you just sort of housekeeping kind of things, uh, most of you have found the chat. That is awesome. So if you have a quick little need, go there. However, please resist the temptation to put your questions that you want an answer to in the chat thing, because as chat starts scrolling, it's very easy for us to lose a question. So if there's something you really want an answer to, please use the questions and answers to have. That will allow us to come back to it more systematically and make sure that you get the answers uh, that you want. Uh, there will also be a couple of polls that will pop up at certain places. Do you guys know how this goes? I think we've all kind of learned how to do this online thing a whole lot better than maybe we did a year ago. Uh, but of course, there's always the inevitable two questions. Will I get a copy of the slides and will there be a recording? And that's a double yes there. So you don't have a need. Uh, you know, to take any screenshots or anything like that. You're going to get a copy of it all in your follow-up email. Uh, so sit back, relax, take the content in, and enjoy the conversation with us today. Uh, at Renaissance, we do always like to start with our mission, uh, which succinctly stated uh, is to accelerate learning for all. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, it's a mission that has always been important, uh, but it's maybe more important right now because of the disruptions that we have had to school. Uh, and also, too, uh, you know, we're going to talk specifically uh, about mathematics today. Uh, and uh, even though the projections are just starting, we're beginning to get back to school assessment data. One pattern that is pretty clearly emerging is that it's very likely to assume that mathematics progress is going to be far more impacted than reading progress. Uh, so now more than any other time, it's critical for us to know how to accelerate learning in mathematics because of what's going on. And that brings us to our first poll question. Uh, so that's going to pop up on the screen for you here. Uh, and basically, it's asking for a bit of background. And, you know, there's all this chatter. There were two articles yesterday, you know, about the COVID slide is what most people are saying. Sometimes they're saying the pandemic slide. Just choose whatever you think, uh, you know, is what you anticipate the COVID slide is going to be like. Is it going to be dire? Or would you say it's more in the moderate range? Or would you go so far as to say it might be minimal? Or would you say that it's negligible? We're maybe worrying about something that is not necessarily going to uh, matter all that much. Um, I do want to point out, there's been a lot of articles out there. When you are reading them, be careful about what you are reading because many of them are predictions or projections. They are using some statistical models to make a best guess about what's going to happen, but it's only been about the last five days or so that truly in, uh, you know, in the common articles for education that we've actually begun to see hard, actual, back-to-school data uh, that says what's going on. So Harold, if you want to close that poll and show us the results, let's see what folks are anticipating around the COVID slide. We've got 27% saying dire, a lot of folks saying moderate. Uh, there were a number of projections that were very dire. The one that I could never figure out was one that came out, and actually there was an entire article bashing that model today. It was a group that predicted that kids would lose anywhere from 180 days to 220 days of growth. Now, the problem with that is kids were basically only out of school for about 60 days. So how do you miss 60 days of school and slide 180 days plus? Here's the good news. Uh, even though some of the projections were dire in their scope, we're actually finding that in the preliminary back to school data, uh, it's more in the moderate to minimal range. But again, the harder hit area is mathematics. So there's going to be some lifting we need to do. I do want to point that out. We're going to talk about Freckle today, and, and, and Freckle has multiple content areas in it. So there is English language arts content in there, but we're not going to talk 
about ELA today because the real mission that we're going to have in front of us next year is mathematics. So we won't be offended if you came for ELA and you fade away, that's fine. Uh, but we do want to be forthright and honest up front. Today's conversation is one about mathematics. Uh, and there have been a number of projections. Uh, this, one, this one back to the spring, uh, Kaffeld and Kaswa. And, and they predicted mathematics. And again, in our own data, we're beginning to see, we have about half of the back to school assessment data in, and we are indeed seeing uh, that mathematics is the area that's the most impacted. And, and given that math is so sequential, uh, there was every reason to anticipate that and, and every logical way to understand it. But what we as school people are gonna have to do is to turn our attention to how we address that. So whatever the reality is, when we get our actual back to school data for our students, we've gotta be prepared uh, to address it in, in whatever form it comes. So I have a report on the screen here uh, from the new teacher project. Um, it's a fine report. I'm only using it as a placeholder uh, because as it says on the screen, there are other reports that say the same thing. I use it as a placeholder because basically multiple agencies that advise on instruction are all saying the same thing. And it is highlighted there in recommendation number one from that new teacher project report for us to address the needs that our students are gonna have. It is critical that we prioritize our time and attention on the most important, the most critical prerequisite skills and knowledge. We do not have time to cover everything. We've got to make sure that we cover the stuff that matters the most. Let me give you an example, since we're talking about mathematics, uh, mathematics uh, that came when I was working with a group in London with their national curriculum there. At one particular year level, you know, it's year levels over there, not grade levels, but at one particular year level, one of the big ideas at that year level was place value. And of course, when you understand place value very well, it sets you up for all kinds of other, other concepts in mathematics. And if you don't get place value very well, you're going to be really, really held back. At that same year level where place value was so important, there were also a couple of standards on Roman numerals. <laughs> so let's be clear about, you know, what we deal with in our standards. Often in standards, we have absolutely essential skills commingled with other things that are nice to have of value extras. And next year, this coming year, and as we help kids come back, we don't have time for the extra stuff. We're going to be hard pressed to cover the most critical stuff. So the idea for next year is prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. At Renaissance, we realized that we had an answer to this question because what we anticipated is schools all over this country would say, what matters the most at each grade level? What's the content that matters the absolute most? What are the non-negotiable standards, the things that I absolutely must cover? Uh, information about what we refer to as focus skills was available to STAR customers only prior to this. But I'll show you a free resource where we've now made this available to absolutely every school in the world. Uh, so you do not have to be a customer of Renaissance for <coughs> assessment to get to what I'm showing you. We have a list grade by grade for both reading and mathematics that tells you for your state, because we create a custom learning progression for each state or territory or country, it tells you grade by grade what the absolute most essential skills are. We refer to them as focus skills and they are defined this way. This is from a paper. Uh, from the National Foundation for Educational Research, our partners for some of this work in London. And what they said is focus skills. Those are the skills that are considered to be essential underpinnings. Another word would be foundations. Skills that are considered to be essential underpinnings for future learning. In other words, they are skills that you have to learn at a certain point, because at some point in the future, whether that future is later that same year or in future years of school, at some point in the future, other skills are gonna be built on top of them, like a foundation. And you know what happens? When the foundation is strong, everything is held up and it is supported. And if the foundation is weak, uh, then there's some pretty bad consequences there. So you can think about the focus skills as being the foundations and the load-bearing walls of the domains of reading and mathematics. They are what holds everything else up. Now, many of us have filled our at-home time by watching HGTV, and it doesn't take very long on any HGTV renovation show before you make it into a conversation of, is this a load-bearing wall or a non-load-bearing wall? Because if it's a non-load-bearing wall, I can take it out and move it around. 
And again, within our standards, we have things that are like non-load bearing walls. They can be moved around, they can be altered in some ways and still be fine. But we also have things that are foundations and load bearing walls that if they aren't there, things are gonna become compromised structurally. So let me show you what this looks like. In an overall sense, let's use California as an example. We'll show several examples. So if you're not from California, it's okay, just wait a minute. We might have your state up here too. Uh, California, if you take their math standards and you break them down. Now, what we did is we broke these things down into discrete teachable skills. So something that can become the basis of an individual lesson. When you take the California math standards, and remember standards often include more than one skill. When you break them down, into discrete teachable skills, there's a little over a thousand. So 1,051 to be precise. Of that 1,051, we identified 27% as being focus skills. So here's the 27% you really, really, really need to focus in on. And here's the other 73% that you can afford to be a little bit less concerned about. Cover the essential ones really, really well and then go back and cover the other ones as well as you can, but it helps to know the stuff that matters the most. So that's what it looks like for California. Let's use another example. Let's use the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, the TEKS. You take the TEKS math standards and you break them down, again, into discrete teachable skills, something that can become the basis of an individual lesson, then the end result of that is, 19% of them, 175, are focus skills. So ultimately, what folks are probably saying is, well, how do I see the focus skills for my state? Now, some of you may have done a webinar with us already because we've been talking about this a lot, but let me pivot over there and let me show you how to see the focus skills of your given state. Now, as I pivot, you guys make sure that I am still showing the stuff, oh, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way. I'm gonna pivot over there, let me stop share and it'll be easier with my browser here. Uh, so we're gonna go to the Focus Skills Resource Center, which is a pretty simple URL. It is renaissance.com forward slash focus skills. And when you get there, you see something that looks like this. Uh, so again, there's the URL up there. If you want more research, because we're getting you just a simple version of this today, it's under this orange link right here. Again, I'm going very quickly so that Lindsay has plenty of time to show you the awesome stuff that her team has done inside Freckle. But if you wanna know more about focus skills, there's an awesome video recording right here. So it will, it will go into the whole story of how they were built. It will show you every bell and whistle that there is on the Focus Skills Resource Center. But when you get there, if you scroll down just a little bit later, it's this section that says focus skills by the numbers. Uh, so we're looking at Illinois, uh, we have literacy, uh, grade one has the highest number of focus skills, but remember today's topic is math. So let's see what math looks like in Illinois. Well, in math, you've got different grades and different numbers. If I hover over a grade that I'm interested in, let's say seventh grade, uh, you'll notice up at the top there's a view button. It tells me that the grade seven in Illinois has 27 skills that are absolutely essential focus skills. When I click on that view button, it drills down into a listing where I can press the plus buttons and it will list for me all the focus skills. So we're looking here, actually, let me close the geometry one for a minute. Just eyeball down the column that says focus skills. And let's look for the domain that has the most. I see 11 focus skills all in the domain of number system, which instantly tells me that at the seventh grade level there, the number system is critically important. It's the domain that has the most work. And if I expand that to see what the skills are, I see a name for the skill. I see a more complete description. And sometimes these can get pretty involved and they can have examples and details in there. Uh, but if I'm looking at these, I see the name, I see the full description, and I see this standards coding reference. So if you're trying to figure out how a given skill plugs back in to your standards, that standards coding will tell you there. But this resource allows you to look at any state and see across all the years of school, Judy Caulfield, this is for you because I know you're in Delaware, uh, you're LA, you can see all the focus skills for the grade. I know we had a ton of folks from Jackson, Mississippi, so let's show them some love. Let's take a look at the profile in Mississippi for mathematics as well, but everybody's a winner because all the states are here. And again, you can see the focus skills. And one last thing, 
if you drill into this and you're in there, or if we went down a little bit further, there's a map of the country. And whenever you're in here looking at it, up at the top, do you see this orange box that says Mississippi Math PDF for an example? If I click there, now whatever state you're in, it would say that up there, obviously. So if I click in that, it will give you a PDF uh, booklet where you can print out a listing of all of the focus skills across all the grades. It's got a little bit of information about how we develop them. It's got this cool table that shows you the domains of mathematics across all the grades in your state. And then it's got ultimately listings of all of the focus skills. So let's, let's use this as an example. Let's say I'm teaching, let's go to fourth grade. Let's say I'm teaching fourth grade in Mississippi next year. And I'm working on my algebraic operations and thinking uh, content at that grade level. And my fourth grade kids are struggling. Well, that's not gonna be a surprise next year because we know how third grade ended up for them. Notice that there is this color coding here. What it says is algebra is dark blue. If you looked on that chart that you saw on the webpage, it has the same color codings there. What this then means is if I'm teaching algebraic uh, thinking uh, at the fourth grade level and my kids are really struggling with it, if I wanna just scroll back to the third grade and find the prerequisite skills, I just need to look for that same color. Oh, there it is. And remember that the focus skills are the foundations. So if a kid is struggling with something on grade level, chances are that they miss something from the prior grade. So this allows you to go right back and see those skills from the prerequisite grade before. Now I see a bunch of chat things coming up. So let me pause for just a minute and see if there's any questions. I see in there about how do I get that booklet again? Let me show you two ways. Whenever you've drilled into your state, if I've drilled in for reading, it would be reading Mississippi up here. If I drilled in for math, it says what you see here, it's math at Mississippi. The other place that you can get the booklets is when you're on this main landing page, renaissance.com forward slash focus skills. If we scroll down below this by the number section, you see a map of the country and you can hover over any state, click on it, and it will pop up with the option of either getting the literacy workbook or the math workbook for that state. Uh, and so again, that's how you can get to it. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail because we've done a bunch of webinars about this, and I want to make sure that Lindsay can show you how you can make this actually operate live in Freckle. But remember, if you want more on focus skills, this webinar does just that. It is totally devoted to taking you through every element of the Focus Skills Resource Center. But let's see what other questions in there. Uh, okay, there may, there's a question from Lori about what do the numbers represent? Kind of depends on where we are, Lori. So if I drill into first grade here, and I'm not sure exactly what numbers you were talking about. If I'm here and I see the Focus Skills, 12 is how many there are in that domain, two here, three here, five here. And if I drill in, I take a look at them. Do you see where it says position? That is in the overall learning progression for you. So like in the case we were looking at before, 500 skills or 900 skills in total, this would be the 99th skill in order, followed by the 102nd skill, 103rd skill. You can think of this position heading as being synonymous with difficulty. The higher the number, the more difficult the skill. Let's see what other questions here. Uh, there was a question here about, does this correlate with NWA and MAP? Uh, in that both of our assessments are designed to be correlated to your standards, they do a slightly different approach, uh, but these things will overlap really, really, really closely. Um, and so they might use some slightly different headings because when we build these, these domains that you see like algebraic and operations, thinking, geometry, measurement and data, that literally comes verbatim from your state. So we take your state standards and then we unpack them. Point being, if I'm looking at it for, in this case, Delaware, it could be very different and it's gonna have different, so let's look at Delaware, just an example there. Uh, so here's Delaware. If I turn the key on on the side, I see the headings for math in Delaware. But if I toggle over to, let's say, Texas, I'm gonna see different domains and different headings because math in Texas has different domains to it. Um, and so you will see variance between the states according to your standards, okay? 
So I have one last idea that I want to cover, but let's just pause for just a minute and check with Harold and others and make sure that I haven't missed anything that's critically glaring need in terms of the questions. Anything, guys? Yeah, hi, Gene. This is Andy. Um, hey. Question came in that I wanted to just clarify, ask, thought it'd be nice to ask you. Um, you've kind of mentioned focus skills so far. Um, our audience, I think I'm finding this question is coming up. They're asking, are focus skills the same as power standards? Would you help mm -hmm. outline that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, super common question. So um, many times districts identify power standards. Uh, student achievement partners, if you're in a common core state, they put out a list of priority content. Uh, Dr. Bob Marzano for years has talked about his critical skills. These are all very common work. So each group, each agency is trying to identify for you what matters the most. Now, the student achievement partners work is unique to Common Core, so that would only, you know, it's only replicable to them. Uh, Bob Marzano did his work to be more universal across all the states. We did our state by state by state. So some states like Delaware accepted the Common Core as is, no changes. California accepted the Common Core, but then added some skills at certain grade levels. And so we unpacked those and put those in there as well. All of that is to say is power standards, critical content, priority content, focus skills. They're all trying to say you this, do the same thing. We're using some slightly different methodologies. So will they line up perfectly? No, because the methodologies vary a little bit, but will they overlap 90% or more? Absolutely, absolutely. Other questions, Andy? Let's see, just reviewing the chat here. Um, yeah, there's a number of questions. Um, Last one that I'm seeing, is there a way to view focus skills uh, by position number from least to greatest? There is if you are a star customer. Uh, so if you are in star, you can access the learning progressions and see them to some degree in order. It's a bit of a challenge because what we found is when we sit down with teachers and we ask them, how are you gonna use this? they inevitably plan through domains. It's like a teacher says, I'm about to do my geometry unit, or I'm about to do my numbers unit. And that's the reason that in most of these tools, we have organized them just by like that, because then a teacher's gonna have their pacing guide in one hand, and so they're gonna, I, I, this is what the first unit is, let me go here. Uh, so uh, not easy, but there are some ways in STAR that you can do it if you are a STAR customer. Um, one quick addition to that is the new focus skill reporting in Freckle that I'll go over with you guys in just a bit um, has some tools to help you see the focus skills in progression order. Yeah. Awesome. So Liz, got you covered there. Other questions, Andy? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Uh, no, no further questions at this time. Thanks, Gene. Well, I will say that my mentor, Terry Paul, said the three words that get people the most interested in anything you have to say is if you tell them that it is new, that it is free or that it is sexy. And we're not gonna wax sexy in our conversations today, but we are <laughs> gonna show you both free focus skills tools that are new. And Lindsay's gonna show you a new feature in Freckle, which is awesome too. So two out of three is not too bad, but that does get us to our next poll question. So Harold, if you will help deploy the poll for us here, it'll kind of make the transition to my last point. Um, here's what I'd like to know. And you are allowed to vote for more than one. But you know, as teachers, we've always got to make a decision. Something has to orient us. Something has to be our true north. As you think about what should be going on, what should be your primary consideration? That's when you're, and I, and I mean it through the lens of, as you plan instruction. Should you be saying, I got to do my grade level work? Or are you saying, I need to meet my students where they are? So, you know, knowing that this is going to be torn, if you have to vote for two, you can vote for two. And if you want to vote for just one saying, yeah, definitively this one thing has to guide me more than anything else, what would you say? And this is a new one for me. This is a new question. I've never pulled an audience on. So we'll give you a couple more seconds to respond. I want to see how you do because there's a tension, you know, because sometimes what your grade level content is, is not exactly where the kid is, which means, oh, God, what am I going to do? So let's see the results here. Let's see how did folks respond to that one. So uh, more people said it was more important to meet kids where they are than it was necessarily 
to be you know, driven by that emphasis on grade level content. And again, I think that speaks to the tension. The last thing that I wanna show you, and we'll paste this into chat is, the agencies that are out there making recommendations around instruction are pretty consistent about what they ask us to do. And in some ways, it allows for an answer of both. It does give a driver, uh, but I think it resolves that tension. Uh, and so I'm gonna use a graphic here that came from Ed Week. If you simply Google deciding what to <coughs> teach, here's how. Uh, we will, you know, we'll paste in the link and everything here, but if you just Google deciding what to teach, here's how, you will get this graphic which I think if teachers have not seen, this is a really good thing to show because what it says is step number one this year, figure out what the priority stuff is at your grade level. Figure out what matters most. So if you're teaching seventh grade math, what's the most important stuff for seventh grade math? Now remember the Focus Skills Resource Center is gonna help you. It's gonna show you that essential subcategory of skills that matters the most. And I think we have to figure that out because we know we're gonna have to do catch up this year. So we can't cover everything, but we gotta make sure we cover what matters the most. Then it says the next step is start doing your classroom level work. And the implication is that you do this at grade level. So if I'm teaching seventh grade math, I start with my first on grade level unit, but I also ask myself, what are the essential prerequisites? If my first unit is geometry at the seventh grade level, what is it that my kids needed to bring from the sixth grade level to be successful with this on grade level content? And then you start working through steps three, four, and five. You might wanna create a quick little quiz or activity to check on those prerequisites. If you find that they're in place, great. If you find that they're not there, then step number four, you're gonna to need to review them with kids. And if you found that they weren't there in step number three and you needed to review them in step number four, then you're gonna to have to move to step five as well, which is after you review it, you create another quiz or activity to check and see where the students now understand it. But the idea is do your grade level content, but go more slowly and more carefully and check systematically on the prerequisites and make sure that they are there. So it's kind of like answering both. It is prioritizing grade level content, but it's also saying, but we're gonna work back until I find where the kids are and we're gonna meet them there. But ultimately that could be a paperwork burden. Lindsay is gonna show you some awesome new stuff in Freckle that's just gonna make this whole process so much easier. So I'll turn it over to Lindsay. Awesome, thank you, Jean. So now that we have an in-depth understanding of what focus skills are and why they're important, the logical next question is, how do I get these in front of students? How do I make sure that they're practicing that just right, most important material as efficiently as possible? Uh, so quickly to recap, um, math teachers have a really tough task in front of them more this year than ever before. Uh, we know that you're responsible for covering that grade level content, right? As a fifth grade teacher, you need to teach those fifth grade standards. And as Jean has gone over, not all of those standards are created equal and some of those focus skills are most important. While at the same time, we need to make sure we're filling those prerequisite skill gaps, meeting those students where they are to ensure that they can catch up to their peers as efficiently as possible. Uh, both of these things are necessary in order to propel your students to that finish line of readiness for uh, the next grade level, for high school, for the future. Um, and thankfully, Freckle is utilizing focus skills for the first time to give math teachers solutions to both of these problems. So starting off with that first one, uh, how as a teacher can I find and assign grade level focus skills in Freckle? I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the Freckle teacher experience so that I can show you this firsthand. Uh, let's say I'm a fifth grade math teacher. I'm logged into Freckle. I go into my math standards page to see all of the stuff. You'll notice that Freckle is already defaulting to fifth grade because that's the grade level of the students in my roster. And this is all the stuff that my state has told me to cover this year. Um, it's a little overwhelming, right? There's a lot of stuff to cover, but thankfully Freckle has uh, the ability to filter this down to just show those standards of focus skills. So I check this box, uh, breathe a mini sigh of relief because this is much more manageable for me to cover, at least to prioritize um, first. And so I can take a look at the focus skills uh, that my state, that are included in my state system. This week, uh, I'm going to introduce multiplying and dividing by 10 to my students. So let me click into that standard. I can see that it contains at least one focus skill. So it's definitely an important standard for me to prioritize. 
Freckles recommending right away that I assign targeted practice to my students to kind of collect data about where they're at with this particular set of skills. When I go ahead to create this assignment, I have a couple of different options. And one thing I recommend is that I narrow down to just that focus skill to ensure I'm getting the most bang for my buck and giving students questions at the skill that is uh, most important uh, for their future success. I can also preview the assignment, right, to make sure that these questions look the way I expect. And this might, as a teacher, I might have the reaction of, wow, these questions look great and really helpful for most of my class. But I know some of my students aren't really going to be ready for this material just yet. They might need a little bit of extra support. Uh, because Freckle is adaptive, we take that into account when a teacher is assigning any targeted practice assignment. And all of those students who are below grade level based on their adaptive practice data or their star data in this skill area, we're actually going to give them extra support when they practice this assignment. So they're going to see a video uh, when they enter the assignment and they'll also have earlier access to hints than other students do. Uh, just to sort of level that playing field, even though we're maintaining consistency in the content that all of your students are, are um, seeing so that you can use this assignment as an exit ticket, we do want to make sure that students who are struggling have access to a little bit of extra support while they're working. So I could go ahead and uh, create this assignment. Um, I'd like to show you what happens afterwards. So as that fifth grade teacher, I'm wondering, now that my students have completed something at a focus skill, so I know they're practicing the just right material, what do I kind of do next to follow up on that? So I'm going to take a look at, at an assignment uh, that I created last month. I can go ahead and see that out of the four students who completed this assignment, two of them, Abraham and Carrie, did really well. They, they got a high score, high accuracy on this, this assignment. One of my students did okay. Um, he's getting the hang of it, but might need a little bit more practice. And one of my students really struggled. Um, instead of forcing me to kind of choose the right interventions based on that information, Freckle actually makes this super easy for me uh, to, to follow up with an intelligent next step for each group of students. So for those students who are ready for a challenge, with one click, I can assign a DOK challenge to push their thinking at that same standard for those students, Abraham and Carrie, who are ready for it. Uh, for that student who needs a little bit more practice, I can go ahead and reassign the assignment that I just created, which would give that student more questions of that focus skill, um, but just allow them to get some more practice so that it can push them up into that proficient category as well. And last but not least, actually, I think this is one of the most important recommendations that Freckle offers for that student um, who really struggled with the assignment and got that 40%. With one click, I can assign prerequisite skills to that student. So that's giving them the more foundational content they need to practice first, uh, before they can find success at the top level focus skill. So returning uh, to the slide deck for a moment, just to recap, as a teacher, if I want to find and assign grade level focus skills in Freckle, there's kind of a three step process to get it, to make the most out of these offerings. First, from the standards page, I'm going to filter down to the most critical skills at my grade level, those focus skills, right? Then I'm going to create a focus skill targeted practice assignment that Freckle automatically is going to modify with more support for those struggling students. And then I'm going to follow up using Freckle's smart recommendations for each student group to make sure that my struggling students get a little bit of, a little bit more foundational practice and my students who are advanced get pushed to the next level. I should point out here that all of the features I just showed you are available for all teachers. So free, with free Freckle accounts as well as premium Freckle accounts. Uh, teachers who, are, who have premium Freckle math licenses are going to get a little bit more value out of this feature set, though, because they have unlimited assignments to use every week. I'm going to pause here to see if there are any questions before I move on. Andy, how are we doing? Good, Lindsay. Yeah, we do have a couple questions. First one for you is, are these available for ELA as well when assigning by standard and targeting the focus skills? As of right now, Freckle does not have ELA focus skills tagged in the same way math does. So while it is possible to narrow down to the standards that you want to focus on and assign targeted practice at those standards, we don't allow teachers to narrow down to focus skills just yet. Great. Thank you for answering that. Um, we have a couple more questions coming in through Q&A. So thank you to the audience for submitting those. Uh, first one for you, Lindsay, is does each skill have a targeted practice first? Um, can you clarify that question a little bit? Do you mean does this, do all focus skills have access to targeted practice in Freckle? If 
Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to ask Megan, who submitted the question. Uh, maybe if that if that's uh, yeah. what Megan means, if you're wondering if all focus skills um, have targeted practice assignments available, so the answer to that is all of the focus skills that we have support for in Freckle will also have a targeted practice assignment available. It says, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, Megan did clarify, does each focus skill begin with targeted practice? Hmm, so I think what, I go, what I'm going over next might help clarify that a little bit. It is possible to assign targeted practice at a focus skill, yes. It is also possible for students to independently access focus skill practice at their level. So that's actually a great segue into the next piece that I'm gonna go over. And just before we do that, Lindsay, I've got one last question. And this question is coming from Ellen. She's wondering, can you show us what the students are viewing and on all three levels? Um, so feel free to take that one as well and figure whether or not there's time today in our webinar to showcase some of that. Or we can always, Ellen, work with you directly. Let us know. We can um, connect with you offline about that too. Yeah, I would love, so we are going to show the student experience next. However, I don't know if we have time to show what that student experience looks like for all age groups. So that might be something, Andy, that uh, you two can follow up about afterwards. Perfect. Great question. Cool, so uh, this is sort of the best practices for making sure you're assigning grade level focus skills in Freckle. But as a teacher, I had tons of students who weren't even close to grade level, right? And so a natural next question might be, what about my students who are two, three years below grade level? They need more than just an extra hint or an extra video. They really need those prerequisite skill gaps to be filled in on their own time so that they can catch up to their peers as quickly as possible. Freckle has an answer for that. Um, we know, based on some of the research Jean shared, that students who are significantly below grade level need, they don't need practice at every single skill in every single domain or skill area um, below their grade level. What they really need is practice at those most critical focus skills spanning domains so that that student who is working at a second grade level can catch up to his or her fourth grade peers in as little time as possible, focusing on that most critical information or those focus skills. So that is exactly how we designed an all new practice mode in Freckle uh, called Focus Skills Practice. Uh, this mode is available for premium STAR Freckle customers only. So those customers who are already using STAR and then syncing their STAR results into Freckle. And the reason why is because we're actually using that STAR math score as the starting point to ensure that Freckle is able to give students just right focus skill sessions, even if those focus skills are below their current rostered grade. I'm going to show you what this looks like on the student side. Um, my name is Elizabeth now. I'm a fifth grade student who has already taken a STAR test. I go into practice math and I see this brand new focus skills option on my dashboard. So before, when I would go into adaptive math, we can look at this quickly, I have all of these options to choose from, right? I can choose measurement and data or financial literacy or base 10. Um, with focus skills, when I click into here, I actually only see one option. This is the single focus skill that based on my star math data and my freckle practice data, we've, the system has determined is the most valuable next skill for them to practice. So even though I'm a fifth grader, this skill might come from third grade, it might come from second grade, it's that next up most foundational bit of knowledge that I need to learn in order to catch up to my peers. So when I go ahead and click in, if Freckle has determined that I'm struggling with this skill, so I have low accuracy on my most recent questions when I attempted it, it's gonna start me off with a video as a little refresher. And I'm also going to see prerequisite questions automatically embedded into my session. So without the teacher doing anything and without the student even knowing, my practice is going to be easier, uh, scaffolded to prepare me for that top level focus skill when I struggle. Uh, a couple of things to note about this interface. First of all, it looks exactly the same as what the student already sees when they're practicing in adaptive math in Freckle and targeted math in Freckle. They don't need to learn anything new for this new practice mode. It's just about triggering the right session at the right time. Um, also worth calling out that this works on any device. So it's responsive. It will work if students are using a phone. Um, so we just wanted to make sure this was as accessible as possible um, for as many students as possible. So once a student finishes the session, let's just 
pretend I get every single question right. Um, what's going to happen is that I will actually master that focus skill. This number in the top right corner for skills mastered is going to increase increment by one to say that I've mastered that next skill. And then this skill is going to change to be that next harder one that I still have not become proficient in yet. So in this way, focus skills is going to progress me through that most important material that I need to learn in order to catch up to my peers. A couple of quick points. So like I said, uh, focus skills does adapt as Freckle gets more data. And like I showed you, it's going to give students more foundational questions and a video when students are struggling. Um, but what about those students who actually master all of the focus skills through their rostered grade? Uh, instead of allowing them to practice material from above their rostered grade, which is something that they're able to do in adaptive practice, in this case, we actually turn on a review mode for them within focus skills, where they're going to be able to choose from between from up to two skills, two focus skills from their rostered grade in order to continue working on. So our philosophy here is that even if you've mastered everything, right? You see all 26 skills have mastered through your rostered grade level. It's always beneficial to get more practice and make sure you deeply understand those skills at your grade level before moving on to that future content. Uh, so this practice mode is valuable for all students, not just those students uh, who are particularly struggling and, are, and need that remediation. Last but definitely not least, teachers can use the focus skills report to track progress. We actually just released this earlier this week, so it's brand new and exciting. You guys are some of the first people to hear about it. Uh, this focus skills progress report is going to give teachers visibility into everything I just showed you on the student side. And Lori, this is where your earlier question about focus skills in progression order from difficulty comes into play, because you can see we've actually created this table with all focus skills through your class's rostered grade level and ordered them in terms of difficulty, right? So in terms of the progression that you would see in the star learning progressions. And teachers are then able to see which of those skills are gaps for their students, so which ones they need to focus on. They're also able to differentiate between the skills that students have placed out of via star test and the skills that they've shown mastery of during freckle practice. Um, we also give teachers guidance with some helpful icons here. So if a student had low accuracy with the current skill, they're in they're seeing prerequisite skills. We show this yellow hazard sign so that teachers know to pay a little more attention to them. And for those students who are in that review mode, um, they've mastered all of the skills through their rostered grade level. We're going to show this green check mark um, so teachers know that's what's going on. They can celebrate that achievement with their students and potentially uh, direct them to other types of activities if they don't think this will be as fruitful for them. It's a lot to take in, um, but to put it all together, what these new features in Freckle allow teachers to do um, is all teachers can assign focus skills to assess student mastery of that grade level material. So fifth grade teacher finding the most important fifth grade content, giving it to their students with supports as needed. And for those premium customers who are using Star and Freckle together, we're also taking care of your students who are struggling the most. So those students who really need to remediate gaps from previous years, um, we're giving them auto-generated practice at the just right level they need to succeed and progressing them through in a way that teachers can follow along from their focus skills report. And we're confident that putting these two pieces together really creates a robust solution um, to fast track your students to grade level mastery as quickly as possible. Great. Um, so that is all I have. I'm sure there are some questions uh, to answer in the chat. Do we want to shift over to questions? Yeah, let's do that. Um, got a question here for Jean and potentially also for you, Lindsay, because you helped to really get this realized into Freckle. Question is, is this considered a research-based intervention? On the Freckle piece, I mean, the, the challenge with the research-based intervention thing is the the concept is there, but there's really no formal vetting. So Freckled has been extensively studied and is designed off the research base there. Uh, so Lindsay, I don't know if you have more background on you know, specific studies we've had around Freckle, but you know, some, some very, uh, I mean, it's relatively a new product, but some very, very nice results uh, coming from some preliminary research there. Yeah, we, we definitely have evidence bearing out the idea that Freckle usage correlates with mass growth. Um, in your particular question about is this new focus skills practice a research-based intervention, I would have to say no to that since there yeah, isn't specific it's only weeks research. old. <laughs> yeah, it's new. Hopefully one day we feel good about it. 
Awesome, thank you. Here's another question. How can students who took the STAR math benchmark assessment get FRECO recommended assignments? Is a teacher presented with a list of options in FRECO based on standards being taught um, or other options? Um, I can take that one. So right now there isn't anything in the STAR interface, so inside Renaissance, that's recommending specific freckle assignments. But that's what some of the tools I just showed you are great for, because what happens is that as soon as a student takes the STAR test, freckle is going to know all that data and automatically be recommending that next up focus skill to that student without the teacher even having to do anything. Um, and meanwhile, when the, when the teacher is actually creating assignments for students, it's easy for them to do that by taking a look at that focus skill report to see where those gaps might lie and then creating a follow-up targeted practice assignment to address them. Awesome, thank you for that. Uh, here's another question. Um, more like sort of, a, sort of a thought on this. I don't know if it warrants a response, but I'll just read it anyway. Uh, question is, so it sounds like this year the focus skill practice will be used more, most rather than the adaptive practice. That's a great question. I think that is a personal decision that each teacher needs to make for their classroom. I can tell you a little bit about how I think of the similarities and differences, right? So both adaptive practice and focus skills practice adapt to what each student needs, right? I think the adaptive practice is especially valuable if you know you're going to be focusing on, say, geometry for the next month, and you want your students to have as much intensive practice with those prerequisite geometry skills as possible so that they're engaged and, and ready to participate um, as you're introducing new material to your class. Um, there's a lot of breadth there, right? But focus skills practice is especially valuable for those students who are really struggling um, and need just sort of to prioritize that most efficient remediation. What is the most important skill that they need to learn right now, regardless of the domain, right? So I see them as very complementary by combining this sort of domain-based practice with this targeted intervention based on what that student specifically needs. I think you find a lot of powers there. But you're right that in a, if you're seeing in, a, in your classroom that tons of your students are multiple grade, multiple grade levels behind, I think the focus skills practice is going to do a better job of fast tracking that than the adaptive practice might. Awesome, thank you for that. We've got a number of questions and I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure we can get through as many of them as possible in the next 13 minutes before our time is up. So keep them coming. Um, First, I just want to address the broader question that I've been seeing. Will participants receive a link for today's webinar? Um, I can answer that. Absolutely, yes. Within a day or two, you'll receive an email follow-up. So anyone who registered, anyone, anyone who's here live today, you're going to get an email. It will provide the recorded link. You can watch it again anytime, share with your colleagues. And then also, if you wanted to get in touch with us, um, you can contact us as well through that email. Just respond to them, let us know. We'd be happy to connect. All right, next question for our presenters. Um, I am the math interventionist for middle school. Is it advised that I assign focus skills with what they are working on with their gen ed math class, but at their level? Sorry, I'm rereading it to make sure I understand. And while you're reading, I do want to give one like big message about focus skills as Lindsay prepares that one. I love what was done there in Freckle with a review of all the focus skills, because when you're talking about the focus skills, your goal with your students must be absolute mastery of those skills. So they may only represent in the case of, you know, depending on what state you're in, it may only be 27% of the total skills. That doesn't mean we're going to spend 27% of our time on them. We're going to spend 47, 57. Um, Doug Lemoff, who wrote Teach Like a Champion, he wrote about a concept similar to this in his book where he calls by the 80-20 rule. What's the 20% of things that you really practice that get you 80% of the results? And what he said is, our goal is to help our students become great at the most important things. And that's really what we're talking about with focus skills. They are a subcategory of the skills overall but your goal is to have kids be great at them. They are not negotiable. Kids cannot do without them. They are the foundations. They are the load-bearing walls, which means when we work to address them with students, we are expecting total mastery. Well, stop, and kids are good enough. We keep giving them exposure to those things until they have mastered them completely. Lindsay? Yeah, so 
I think the answer, or if I'm understanding the question correctly, you're wondering about giving students assignments that address focus skills from below their current grade level to kind of go along with what they're learning with their general ed uh, classroom. I think that's an awesome idea. I think if you are, if you do belong to a school that has the premium Freckle star subscription, and so those star scores are automatically sinking into Freckle, it's less necessary to do what you're saying because the students will already see those focus skills in focus skill practice. And we're kind of taking out the guesswork of which focus skill is most important for them to focus on next. Um, but I think in the absence of that, it's a great idea is to take, you know, if you're working with fifth grade students who need support in second, third, fourth grade material to find those key focus skills, kind of like what Jean showed by looking at looking at the domain area that you're about to teach in class, right? So if you're in, if their gen ed classes teaching geometry skills for fifth grade, looking at that third grade, fourth grade geometry focus skills and assigning those to students, that's essentially what we're doing with fo automatic focus skill practice. And so if you don't have that feature available, that's a great uh, workaround and, and way to do that. Yeah, and I think within this dialogue about you know, keeping kids on grade level content, that is one thing when I'm dealing with English language arts where scaffolding a child up is, is one thing. It's something else in math. Uh, remember what uh, Steven Pinker at MIT said about math. It's ruthlessly cumulative. Ruthlessly cumulative. In other words, when you've missed something, you're going to be cut down at your knees by having missed something along the way. So... You know, I think I, that I love that. That's why I love that Education Week graphic of saying, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to let grade level content be my driver, but I'm going to check on those prerequisites more carefully when it's necessary for me to go back and fill them in. I will do that. So it's not really an either or. We're simply saying that grade level content is the driver, but we'll go back as far as we need to in finding where kids are, meeting them there. And then you saw that sort of jumping ahead graphic that Lindsay used. Let's move you ahead, focus skill by focus skill by focus skill, until we get you back up to where you need it to be at grade level. Uh, and again, we, we don't have time for the extras. You know, when push comes to shove, I am not going to sacrifice place value to also cover Roman numerals. Uh, you know, I'm going to make sure that we cover the stuff that really, really matters the most. And that's all that this conversation is about. All right, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, so is the STAR assessment assigned automatically this year or do we assign it? I know when students log on initially, they're given a pretest to see what level they are on. Lindsay, do you happen to know that? It sounds like there's a little confusion here between the Freckle pretest and the STAR assessment, which I totally understand. So Freckle has its own built-in pretest um, that it uses if we don't have STAR data coming in. So if we don't have STAR results for a student, when they enter math for the first time, when they enter a new domain, they're going to take a pretest. Uh, for those customers who have both STAR and Freckle, uh, the great thing is that once they take a STAR assessment, students will bypass the pretest in Freckle. They won't have to sort of double up on that because we know a just right starting point for them based on STAR. So the answer to your original question is that the STAR assessment still has to be assigned in STAR. Um, students aren't going to just automatically see a STAR assessment by logging into Freckle. But once they do take the STAR assessment in STAR, uh, their Freckle uh, starting points will adjust based on that information. Thanks, Lindsay. Perfect. Um, another question, when will the Focus Skill report be released? I don't see it in our account. Could it be because we have not utilized Focus Skills yet? Yeah, so the Focus Skill report is available for those, it's already live. However, it is only accessible for those teachers who have students that have STAR data, right? So this is one of those premium features that if you are using STAR and Freckle together, um, then you have access to that on your, on your math, from your math levels report page. Awesome. All right, I think we have another question that I can speak to. I think we're still getting more regarding the recorded link. So I just want to reiterate, yes, you will get a recorded link in an email follow-up that should be arriving between 24 to 48 hours after today's webinar conclusion. So you'll have a link, you can share it, you can watch it again. And also if you want to get in touch with us, if you have additional questions about anything related to Renaissance products that you may be interested in and are using, feel free to reply. We'd be happy to connect with you directly. Um, Here's another question. 
I'm hoping this is the right one for you guys. Is there anything that needs to happen administratively to connect our star assessment results with Freckle or is it 100% automated? That is a complicated question. The answer is that it depends. Um, if it sort of depends, and we don't have to get into this too much here, but it depends on what rostering source your school is using in order to pipe rostering data into Freckle. So if, if your school is using Renaissance as that rostering source, um, then that integration happens automatically. Um, if you're not using Renaissance as your rostering source, you need to get that integration requested. Um, and once it's turned on for you, your students will actually manually connect from Freckle into STAR. Um, the, there's more information about that that uh, Andy or I could, could send anyone who's interested. Um, you could also follow up with your uh, customer representative as well. And Lindsay, I'll, I'll ask because I know often when we have things like a star test that's then going to feed something else, sometimes it is a matter of overnight uh, because the data integrations that occur. And I, that yep. may be the case with Ruggle. I haven't gotten a full briefing on that. So often it is a matter that you know, if a kid takes a star test today, it's actually during the nighttime, you know, pulling together all that data that that then would move over into a Freckle. Do you know, is it instantaneous or do we go an overnight kind of delay? It's a nightly sync for, for okay. this. Yeah, so there, that, right. I could bring up your point. So yeah, if I'm testing yeah. today in STAR, we got to go overnight and then tomorrow kid logs into Freckle and now if, you know, if you've got the right versions, then that's come over and they're ready to go. Do you mind if I quickly share my screen? I think we have a couple minutes. I want to show where this new focus report lives on in Freckle, um, just because I'm seeing a couple questions about where it is. Um, if I go in quickly to math reports and I click on math levels, um, then I see, oh, it should be opening. Yep, there we go. So I see this new uh, container indicating that I am using star math and freckle together and prompting me to see student levels from here. So if you see this, if you don't see this container on your report, um, that likely means that star isn't currently configured to be feeding data into freckle. Um, and in that case, you might want to talk to your administrator or if you are an administrator, you might want to talk to yeah, your customer support representative to make sure that um, you get that data piping in and can start using the star freckle integration if applicable to you. All right, just a quick time check. We're at three minutes before we have to wrap up here. Um, before we wrap up, I wanted to just make sure that Jean and Lindsay, you had a couple minutes left to just address the audience. Um, I know I personally want to thank everyone for carving out time today to be with us, but Jean, Lindsay, anything, any last words? Well, I would say uh, we went very quickly through the Focus Skills Resource Center. So uh, if you haven't seen the full video just on that, it's well worth every moment of time to, to again, go to uh, renaissance.com forward slash focus skills, scroll down, look for that blue bar across the center. That video will fully unpack all of the features in the Focus Skills Resource Center. And remember, that's free to everybody. You don't have to have any products or anything. Uh, and so we'll walk through even more detail about how those things were developed, designed, and how to navigate those charts, uh, and just lots of things we didn't have time necessarily to go through today. So if that was new to you, I would say that that's time well spent to go back and take a look at that. Lindsay, anything, uh, any last words from you? Um, no, thank you so much to everyone who took the time to learn about this. I have endless admiration to the teachers and administrators who are working with students this year. In particular, you guys are fighting the good fight and we are so thankful for you. And with that, I do want to just uh, thank everyone one last time for just joining us today. We've got a couple minutes left. We may not be able to address all your questions, but let me provide some next steps that I think might be helpful. Uh, first and foremost, you will get a recording. Uh, you'll get an email within the next couple of days. It will provide the link to today's recorded webinar. You'll also be able to use that if you wanted to, to reply and get in touch with us if you have some continued questions that we didn't have time today to address. You can also, if you are familiar with uh, getting in touch with us already, if it is Freckle specific, we do have a support email that we are more than happy to share. It is simply support at freckle.com. And our fantastic team is always ready to receive those questions, to connect with you directly, and just help navigate and help provide responses to all of the different questions you have. Now, 
If you are interested in learning more, we also can get in touch with you there as well. And you can also reply to the email you'll receive or reach out to us through our support team, which is again, support at freckle.com. Once again, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today during this hour. I wanna specifically thank all of our educators um, from across the country today, as well as thank Jean and Lindsay for just giving us more information about how to utilize focus skills and really be more targeted in the instruction practice with students. All right, with that said, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day and a fantastic week. Bye.